Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we are working on the INFJ handbook together and in today's video we are exploring INFJ sensitivity. We're talking about how an INFJ is sensitive and how they need to deal with it and how they often deal with it. Yeah, uh, to be sensitive means to have a higher than average response to sensory stimulation. You're more prone to overwhelm, to being drained by sensory stimuli. Loud noises, strong lights, intense environments, large group settings, situations with a lot of people drain you. And you would think this meant that you pulled away from and avoided these situations, but it does not have to necessarily be that way. No, INFJs are often the silently enduring types, the people that push themselves to go through these situations for the sake of other people, for the sake of honoring people's expectations and wishes. INFJs can go along with and can put themselves in situations that require and that will drain them for the sake of the people. And INFJ conception of the people is so important in all of this to recognize your view of the people and what they need and what you are to the people, what you are to your audience, what you are to the people around you and the people that you care about. Now growing up I was always intimately aware of the people around me. I was aware of their struggles and of their hardships and I was always setting aside my own needs, pushing down my own emotions and ignoring my own feelings as I went forward in life. I went into politics, I went into all of these stressful situations. I exposed myself to so much hardship as I tried to be strong for the people, as I tried to help them, as I tried to engage in and to do something for them, as I saw them get caught up in political conflicts and intrigues, as I saw them wanting to get through these issues that they cared about so much about the planet, the environment and about the animals. I wanted to help and I thought that my emotionality, my sensitivity was a cripple, not an aid. And so I put it aside. And I put on a front of endurance and resilience. I p acted tough, I acted positive, I acted optimistic and strong for others. I pretended to be always optimistic and happy and perfect so that other people would feel hope, so that other people would believe, so that other people would have the strength and the hope and the ability to relax and to not worry. They would look at me and they would stop worrying because they would see that he would fix it, he would do it, he would solve it. And all of this of course was extremely draining for me. I came home after these events with crippling anxiety and attacks of depression. I hated myself, I felt so bad about myself, I felt weak, I felt I was not doing enough for everyone, I felt I was not pushing myself hard enough and I felt I was failing people and letting people down. And all of this of course drew me only to try harder to live up to people's expectations to the point where I faced a burnout. And burnouts are extremely difficult things, they can leave permanent injuries in the brain. Uh, burnouts are one of the newest modern diseases and it's the cra it's crazy, it's, it can leave scars forever. If you get a burnout once, you are more than likely to get it again. And the fact of the matter is, when you get a burnout, and of course I'm not sure why I'm laughing right now, but uh, it uh, makes you more sensitive to stress afterwards, it makes you struggle even more afterwards. Uh, so it's not sustainable, and that's one of the lessons an INFJ has to learn, to live in harmony with yourself and to understand your limitations while working for other people. Now I want to talk about why INFJs do this, why would they do this, what is the point? Of course, when other people ask us for service, when other people need something, that speaks directly to the INFJ's core passion, feeling and judging. We are the most passionate when we are expressing ourselves and pushing for an ideal or for a value or for an ideology or for something we care about. Want to see an INFJ happy and passionate? Well, speak to their feeling and judging, ask them for help, show them something to care about, give them something to believe in. Now, the issue here, of course, is when that belief comes at the expense of your center point, your balancing point as an INFJ. All INFJs have a balancing point. All INFJs are philosopher, philosopher types, philosophically oriented. We need to ex ex reflect existentially and on life. 
why we are here, where we are headed, and where we are going. INFJs need understanding of themselves and of the world and of other people. INFJs need to introspect on and reflect on other people and on themselves and who they are and what their purpose is. An INFJ needs to intimately understand their own purpose and who they are and how sacred and important they are and how important their emotions are. Yes, an INFJ that is empowered and realizes the importance of their emotions and their own feelings just as well as others. An INFJ who is healthy is just as focused on their own feelings as they are on others. An INFJ who is healthy understands themselves just as much as they understand the world. And the INFJ who is healthy is not is a free of this front, is free of this whale. Yes. What an INFJ is aiming towards, should be aiming towards, is to rid themselves of the influence of the inferior function, to not hide their vulnerable side, to not pretend to be careless, to not pretend to be strong, but to show other people the strength in purpose, the strength in purpose. The strength in knowing who you are, the strength in knowing what you're meant to be, what your destiny is, what your future is, what your ideal is. The strength in your own emotions. Yeah, emotions are your guiding force. Emotions are what propel you forward towards your dreams. Emotions are what give you power to succeed. Emotions let you know what you need to succeed. Yeah, the sensitivity you feel, the stress you feel from being around other people who struggle is important to acknowledge. It's not something to shut down, but it is something to say hello to. Hi, stress. Hi, issues. Uh, glad you could join me. Glad to see you. Glad to have you here. Um, okay, the, no panic, guys. Uh, I'm talking to the emotions here. Uh, it will be okay. It will work out. We'll figure it out. We'll handle it together. Are you with me? Yeah, I think also beyond this, an INFJ needs to realize that the burdens you carry, you do not have to carry alone. The burdens and struggles you carry, you can share with other people. You can let other people know when you struggle and you can let other people know your hardships. Honestly and authentically, you can tell other people how you feel and what you're dealing with and what you're going through and what you need to succeed. You can say, yeah, that's a difficult goal. Yeah, that's a difficult passion. Uh, yeah, the thing is, INFJs tend to promise the impossible. We tend to say we can do something no other person would say yes to. We can say yes to the craziest things. We can accept the craziest things. And we can pull through. We can do the impossible. INFJs have this power of magic. Feeling and judging gives you the power of magic in a sense because you can do things most people would say no to. A thinking and judging type would say that's not possible, That's not. we don't have the resources, we don't have what's necessary to do it. But a feeling and judging type can find a way to make it happen. But with the realization an INFJ will need to ha have is awareness of your boundaries in this. When you promise the impossible, let other people know that it's going to be difficult. Let other people know it's going to cost. Let other people know that it's going to require something. Let other people know what you require to succeed. Only through letting other people know your boundaries and your needs and what you need to succeed in doing what's impossible can you honestly and sustainably be there for other people only by sharing with other people that fact that there is a cost, there is a price, can you honestly and authentically and empathically engage in magic. Yeah, if you hide a price and you end up not being able to pay that price, you're gonna have to put that price on other people and other people don't deserve that. Other people need to know, just as you need to know, your boundaries and your limitations. And yeah, an INFJ is, if they, all they have to do is think, intimately aware of what they can and cannot do. An INFJ knows their ability well. An INFJ knows what is possible. An INFJ knows what is necessary. An INFJ has the power of introvert intuition. And introvert intuition and intuitive judging allows you to see what's going to happen in the future. If you think about it, you can predict, you can make a likely estimation about what you think is within the realm of possible. You can 
make an estimation of what you think is most likely. And that is often a good estimation. It's not always accurate, but it's a better than no estimation. The answers that you have about yourself and who you are and what is possible for you is better than no awareness. It's better than obliviousness or pretending it this does not exist. Now, what can an INFJ do? Well, one advice I would like to give with sensitivity, and this has little to do with other people and more to do with yourself, is that awareness of your volume button. When in an in intense environment, when your introverted intuition is starting to prod at you and you start feeling the need to think about something, take that time. Uh, something I'm realizing more and more is the importance of taking five minutes to taking timeouts as an INFJ. Take timeouts from parties, go out, get a fresh air, come back. You don't have to confine yourself to an extroverted and sensing environment. You don't have to imprison yourself to be there for other people. You can take breaks, you can leave and you can come back. You can shut off and go into your head and you can come back. One of the superpowers of an INFJ is that ability to come back with new ideas, to come back with fresh perspective, to come back with insight. But if you are not letting yourself have that insight, if you're not letting yourself have that alone time, those few minutes that you need to think about your life and who you are and about the future, then you're shutting off that superpower. You're shutting off that source of energy and you're feeling that button You've, because this is your dominant function. Realize that introvert intuition is your dominant function as an INFJ. And you have to consciously shut it off all the time. It's like pulling a lever button. It's like saying pulling that volume button and pulling your introvert intuition to zero. And then you put your hand away and then it starts to boost up again. It starts to boot up again to 100%. And you start feeling this and you start feeling, no, I have to pay attention. I have to stay active. I have to stay fun. I have to be at the party and have to be like everyone else. And you push it down again. And then you feel it going up again. And you're like, no, no, I don't want to think about this. I don't want to disappear. I don't want to go into this twilight zone. I want to be at the party. But of course, your true needs cannot be ignored. You need to think, you need to go into Twilight Zone, you need to embrace Twilight Zone. And if you can't do it right this moment, at least tell yourself, I will do it then. Or at least schedule it in, at least set a time for yourself. A time where your needs are important, a time when you can have fun, a time where you can go away. Also, realize the magic of disappearing. Disappearing is nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with disappearing. Disappearing is a positive thing. To disappear for a while, for five minutes, and to come back, that's an immense change. In that those five minutes, everything about the situation that you're in has changed. Everything, everyone's mood, everything has changed. Your perspective on the entire situation has been turned on end. And that's usually for the better. Yeah, when you're starting to feel frustrated or upset with a situation, and you take those five minutes and you come back, you're kind of reinventing your entire world. You're kind of reinventing the entire party. You're kind of coming at it with a fresh perspective. And suddenly you're not upset with it anymore. Suddenly you're not struggling with it anymore. Struggling, suddenly you're not frustrated anymore. It's like <laughs> introvert intuition is this magic button. And all you have to do is listen to it. Step out for a second, listen to it. And then come back to truly gain its potential. So as an INFJ, how do you cope with your sensitivity? How do you manage being sensitive? What is your core advice on INFJ being sensitive? Feel free to add this in the comments down below. Perhaps it will come out in the book that I'm writing on right now. Perhaps you want to help make this book a reality. Feel free to contribute in any way by sharing this video, by writing your comments or by donating on Patreon. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.